Hey everybody, it's Traffleton. Anyone who's watched my channel for any period of time knows that I am a big fan of Windows and all of their great cults of personalities. We have the walking Tim Allen clone, Yusef Mehdi, who survived almost a decade of Microsoft turnover and now resorts to shilling AI products to everyone and lying about it. We have the lawyer, now appointed eternal president and guard dog, Brad Smith, who has protected Microsoft from its political adversaries for decades. It's a fascinating topic. <laughs> this isn't the right day to talk but about. But you're here with the governors. You're the, you're the leading yeah, CEO of ID. But I'm not, talk, I'm not here to talk about that. We have Satya Nadella, our lovely new CEO, where every time he opens his mouth, it sounds like something written by an AI construct. Each new generation of Windows we also unlock the next generation of hardware innovation across our entire ecosystem. And of course, we could never be without the family man of failure, Panos Pene, who brags about the achievements of his loved ones and awkwardly rehearsed Microsoft keynotes. i tell you a story about my dad. I've talked about him before. Dad's a wonderful human. I remember my entire life. I rattle off all of these experienced Microsoft veterans because all of them are disgusting individuals who have run Windows as a product into the ground and have sold out your privacy for a quick buck. Windows was already on a downward trend at Microsoft as their cloud platform began to take off and Windows 8 almost bankrupted Microsoft as a company. So why put any more effort into something that almost bankrupted the company? And with that bankruptcy ever so looming, desperate times called for desperate measures. And Microsoft has to resort to their classic pattern of behavior whenever things go seriously wrong for them. Don't communicate anything clearly and then ruin the product as much as possible. Because what better way to do things by dragging your privacy through the mud? <laughs> The seeds, of course, were planted in Windows 8 with the shilling of various Microsoft products and the newfound Microsoft Store and Bing integration. But now in Windows 11 and Windows 10, full-blown ads are strewn all across the Windows desktop environment and programs. Windows, for years, has been a privacy invasion, and that has all been taken to a whole new level with Windows 10 and Windows 11. Great things like blogging all of your keystrokes, paywalling basic features to ruin your privacy and security to make you pay for higher versions, harvesting all of your data, and tricking you with dark patterns, bundling other Microsoft products like Teams and OneDrive to harvest more information about you and outpace its competition, conspiring of Amazon to integrate their App Store into the Microsoft Store, allowing both Amazon and Microsoft to collect information about your usage, removing the ability to have local accounts in Windows 11 Home and forcing normies to log into a Microsoft account so they can collect more data. Changing the privacy settings to remove telemetry does absolutely nothing unless you use Group Policy Editor. In fact, it is so bad that because they changed their defaults, they had only done it after multiple governments and organizations complained about it. And I could go on for an hour, but I think you guys get the idea. At this point, Microsoft makes the more compelling case to use Linux on your computer and the year of the Linux desktop than actual Linux users because of how awful Windows is today. I could moan and whine and complain all day long, but I have better things to do with my time, and so do you. You're not just going to sit there and let Microsoft pull all these shenanigans on you. We're better than that, and that's why we're when you install Windows, you're going gonna do it the right way from the get-go. I'm gonna start high level and unfortunately this is where the options for some of you are going to be very limited. You're going to need to use Windows 11, not Windows 10, not Windows 7, not Windows 8.1 Vista XP, Windows 11. 
and I'm going to basically lay out why you need to use Windows 11 instead of something like Windows 10. And I know I'm going to backtrack on something I said uh, in a video two years ago because obviously, of course, we're going to be using Windows Pro or higher, but what's the, what's the deal with Windows 10 and Windows 11 and what should I do? I am going to hard recommend at this point you only use Windows 11. And now hear me out on this one. Your computer could be secretly cut off from Redmond because they have a watermark shaming people who install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. This is basically a glorified way of branding people heretics because they dared to rebel against Microsoft's stupid hardware requirements. But this also means that Microsoft is able to identify that people are using Windows 11 even though they don't want them to. And this is only going to become a more cat and mouse chase as time goes on. And Windows isn't going to be getting any slower. Windows 11 first came out in 2021 to one of the most awkward presentations I have ever seen in my life. And while Microsoft doesn't want to admit it, Windows is going to betray its business users and move towards a more rolling release model with their moments where they push updates in a constant stream with features and you're not going to be able to avoid it. And there are also rumors of Microsoft attempting to manufacture their own line of neural processing units or NPUs to capitalize on the fact that they're right now in a glorified AI war against Google that they created and the potential for them to require an NPU in 2024 with the new faded release of Windows 12 therefore obsoleting Windows 11. And don't think buying a new machine is going to get you out of this. When you go to a store or online to buy your computer, it's going to come with Windows 11 because Windows 10 isn't going to be around for much longer. At this point, because of the direction things are going, it's time we get on the Windows 11 bandwagon and accept it as the future. Because Windows 11 isn't all bad. It's got great things like virtualization, base security, secure boot, and actually enhanced and improved TPM integration with newer CPU sets like Intel Boot Guard or AMD's Pluton. Now that we've established that you need to be using Windows 11, we also need to get into the complexities of Windows licensing, which Microsoft doesn't explain at all and usually changes on a whim. And when I said the options for you are going to be limited, you're, and if you thought they weren't limited of Windows 11, it's about to get much worse because Here's the other one. You cannot use Windows Home on your computer because it is a less viable means to use Windows. In fact, it's probably a crippled version to use Windows on your computer because using Windows Home causes you to lose a lot of control over your system. Things like BitLocker are paywalled. They're going to be more stringent about forcing you to use a Microsoft account and you're going to lose access to things like Group Policy Editor, which allows you to turn off Microsoft's telemetry. And yes, I I know you could hack it back in using something like a PowerShell command or registry tweaks, but these are actually very limited and they're not actually going to be given to you in full force like they would be if you were using something like Windows Pro. We need to also go out into the world and buy our keys. Now you might think you could go on to Craigslist or eBay or Amazon to get yourself a nice copy of a Windows 11 Enterprise key and install Windows on your computer, but you shouldn't do this. There are circles on many third-party marketplaces that rip people off over this and it is rampant. My recommendation is because the cost isn't all that different, Cut out the middleman and buy your key directly through Microsoft on their website or through the store. Better yet, if you go to a brick and mortar store in person with cash, buy your Windows key, then you don't have to give Microsoft anything to work off of. And if your concern is money or you live in a country where it might be really expensive, Windows Pro can be used basically unlimited for free with very little drawback. 
by very little drawback. I mean, things like they don't let you set the color scheme of your computer and you get a glaring watermark on the bottom right screen. But the way I view this watermark, because I've gotten complaints about this in a video before, is when you see this watermark, you need to see this watermark as a badge of honor because you didn't give Microsoft your money and you didn't fund the college education of Panos Panay's children. And when you go and install Windows, you can actually use generic activation keys. And these generic activation keys, you should keep in mind so that whenever you install Windows, you can always use these to get Windows for free. And now I also try to keep in my head the Windows 11 home key, because when you use this home key, I've actually had to use this to bail out my friends and family when Windows needs to be reinstalled on their computers. So keep in mind these basic activation keys. So whenever you go to install Windows, you have these ready so you can use Windows for free. And this also goes without saying that while you can use Windows for free, you have your genuine key, the one thing that we need to be aware of is we need to stay away from modified Windows ISOs or pirated ISOs. Oh ho ho, yo ho ho, piratey mateys. We ain't be using no pirated ISOs or KMS activation hacks because with something as critical as your operating system, you need to stay in the default security model and obtain everything through legal first party means. No third parties, no extra people to trust, just you and Microsoft, who you can't trust anyway. <laughs> now, the other things we need to be doing is we need to not disable Windows Defender. In fact, you probably need to bump up the settings in Windows Defender just so you can get access to even stronger Windows security. And you also shouldn't block things like Windows updates because as much as I get annoyed by these programs, there is no way to completely turn off the privacy invasion on Windows. So why not live with the tools that are built into your operating system? Because you using Windows, especially in a desktop context, implies that you need to trust Microsoft at to a certain degree, it is still to such a degree where you use it. So why not use the default things Microsoft won't let you remove from your computer that everyone else uses anyway? In fact, while I was editing this video, Linus Tech Tips emerges from the shadows with this new abomination called Atlas OS, where he tears apart a Windows install and uses a playbook to rip the supposed blow out of it. This video is an absolute travesty and Linus Tech Tips and his team should be ashamed of themselves for making such an ill-informed opinion to their millions of viewers. I know I've said in the past that Linus Tech Tips isn't the brightest tool in the shed, but seriously, the apology he gave over this video was absolutely pathetic. People who watch our videos are not like dialed in. Yeah. You know, they're not watching every day. They're not advanced users necessarily. And I think that was a little irresponsible. Projects like this should never be used at all and should be avoided like the plague because modified ISOs like this, especially that remove all of these Microsoft features actively harm the security of their users by disabling things like Windows Defender or VBS. You cannot do this without these security features. You could say, well, I'm de-bloating my system and gaining privacy, but as a result, you've just lost all of your privacy because you removed all of the security features and any usability guarantee. So you just made your computer objectively worse. <laughs> so do not go out and use any third-party ISOs, de-bloating, ripping tools that you don't know what they're doing. Atlas OS is a de-bloater. Um, it's open source. Malware can be open source too, and frankly, this thing should be considered malware because it basically cripples all security in your computer. So now that we've established you need to have Windows 11 Pro and you need to not make ultra crazy modifications to it, you go to Microsoft's website and download yourself a copy of Windows. But when I went to go download it over a VPN, it made an excuse to block me, claiming leveraging anonymous 
or location hiding technologies while connecting to this service are generally not allowed. Do you want to know what shouldn't be allowed? Services like Microsoft ruining everyone's privacy. It's such a horrible precedent to set because I remember I could just open the Tor browser and download myself a copy of Windows 11. Sure, it took two hours, but eventually it got done. If you value Microsoft not getting your IP address or having to deal with this process at all, do not turn off any of these services at your home. Instead, go to a coffee shop or a local bar with free Wi-Fi and download the ISO. Heck, go to your local Apple store just to spite Microsoft. But I was prepared for this day. I hoarded myself a copy of Windows 11 22H1 and I'm going to use this to install Windows from now on because I know they're going to be blocking things like Tor, VPNs, or any of these anonymization services. Once you get your ISO, stow it away somewhere so you can use it when you need it because you never know when you or a loved one is going to need to install or reinstall Windows. Because installing Windows in today's day and age actually isn't all that difficult. I mean, really, it's just a bunch of downtime where you wait for it to install. There's also the newly found pain of getting an offline account on Windows because we care about our privacy. So we're going to be using an offline account and because using an online account through Microsoft allows Microsoft to collect more information about us and tie it to an aggregated online identity. So if you're a Windows Pro user, you can actually just click the button which lets you set up a offline account. But if you're a Windows Home user, you're not going to get off of this scot-free. You're going to need to disconnect yourself from the internet, unplug your ethernet, kill your Wi-Fi, put your computer into airplane mode, it's just you need to do everything you can to prevent your computer from connecting to the internet. And once you've disconnected from the internet, then they will present you with the same option they present pro users. And if neither of these work, for some reason in the future that Microsoft plugs either of these up, we have one last alternative. If you go to the Microsoft login page and you just type in in place of your email a random username with a bogus password they will just let you in because something went wrong because after something goes wrong you can then go and create your forbidden local account because after you survive the account creation process and unchecked every box you see in the installer, you gotta say no to everything they offer you and wait 10 million years, Windows will turn on and you will get access to Windows. Once you've gotten this far, you have installed Windows. Congratulations, that was pretty complicated. Man, sure makes Linux look a lot better, doesn't it? Because you don't have to do squat. I could go on for much more, but I want to sort of leave this as a base so that when you go out to install Windows or have to set up Windows for friends and family, these are the kinds of mentalities and the practices we need to have so that we can set people up for success. And speaking of set people up for success, why don't you set me up for success by smashing that like button? If you smash that like button, I can get Panos Panay to tell you a story about his daughters. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys later. Have a great rest of your week.